So, we are in this uh, module 1 and uh, I would like to uh, place emphasis on one of the important uh, issue that governs uh, materials chemistry that is the philosophy of uh, synthesis uh, which is an inseparable uh, issue as far as uh, those working on materials. So, I call this as a philosophy of synthesis the basis for chemistry of solids. Uh, before I go into the details of other uh, slides, uh, I wish to uh, record the contributions from Gosin and his group, especially I have taken most of the resource materials from his uh, uh, group website. Therefore, I would like to place uh, my acknowledgement for um, the resource material that I have taken from his group. When we come to solid state materials chemistry, uh, we are mainly uh, concerned about a few issues. Number one, uh, as I pointed out in the uh, inaugural lecture, uh, synthesis of solids uh, plays a very important role. And uh, if we need to have an idea of uh, the synthetic strategy, uh, the most fundamental understanding that we uh, require is that of structure of solids. So, once you know the structure, you can design what sort of um, chemical uh, approach that you need to take to synthesize these materials. And uh, once you have a hands on grip on the uh, structure and the way you need to make this material, it is possible to correlate that to the property of solids. So, structure and property together would uh, help us in deciding what sort of functional application that we are looking for. And uh, one of the main contributing factors to the uh, chemistry of solids is <coughs> the electronic properties of solids. The key developments in solid state uh, materials chemistry is to do with synthesis and uh, second structure and the properties. And one of the things that really holds this whole study of solids together is the function of defects. In solids defect chemistry plays a very important role whether we have to uh, accept it reluctantly or so the function of defects do play a important role. So, in combination with the defects in solids the properties and structure will determine what sort of utility that we can think of. So, utility of solid state materials in advanced technologies can be realized if one knows how to synthesize a particular, uh, uh, particular structure of a solid and if you are able to fine tune the properties with the help of the intrinsic defects in the solids. Uh, in the next uh, cartoon, I just want to tell you that the fundamental understandings of materials chemistry has to do with knowing the different classes of compounds. And uh, not only knowing the basics of the structure, but one can also come across several new phases which are serendipities in the materials chemistry field. And once we uh, come uh, stumble at new ideas and new uh, molecules or mu new solids, then we can actually translate that into applications. For example, this is application of a magnetically levitated train which has come from the basic understanding of superconducting solids which were not existent. These are not available uh, in nature, but then you by knowing the structure and property you can make these materials. And another group of compounds are these organic materials or organic molecules which are solids which can be translated into display materials. So, as far as uh, these sort of functional applications are concerned, one can start with the basic understanding of uh, structures in solids or by stumbling at some new phases, new solids, you can actually translate that to device applications. Now, uh, when we uh, think about material synthesis, first we need to understand uh, making materials is a big world uh, and uh, the group of people who are engaged in making solids um, 
uh, are a host of groups um, who involve in a variety of uh, solid state materials chemistry synthesis. Now, here I have listed some of the portfolio of uh, these uh, synthetic methods and uh, purposely I have grouped them into some categories. One of the main and the most simplest approach to solid state uh, synthesis is the direct reaction of solids which is not very very uh, intricate it does not call for very stringent application, but then once you get a feel for it it is easier for to make many, many materials. Therefore, these are grouped under uh, one direct re uh, reaction of solids uh, precursor methods or wet combustion synthesis by this you can actually try to make uh, solids in bulk and uh, another uh, group of uh, compounds that you can make is through vapor transport synthesis which is uh, not a very uh, uh, rigorously a solid state method, but then it is another approach by which you can actually uh, aim for synthesis purification crystal growth and doping. Then you stumble at variety of wet chemistry routes which we call it as soft chemistry or uh, as French people call it as chimidus. These are soft chemical approaches by which without making much modification you can bring in a variety of new properties into a existing solid and these are called as novel metastable phases which you can realize using soft uh, chemistry routes and this also involves intercalation and we can also try to synthesize material using uh, electrochemical techniques which is not a very hard protocol. Uh, so, therefore, this can also be considered as a um, soft chemistry route and again ion exchange methods are also soft chemistry approaches. So, here we are talking about direct solid solid interactions and then we can also think of using wet chemistry routes to prepare uh, solids. And, uh, there are other host of methods that are available and this list is ever growing. Um, for example, sol gel synthesis, aerogels um, uh, for composites, then again uh, in the last decade we have witnessed many uh, reactions based on nanomaterials uh, for controlled size, shape and orientation and then you have a templated synthesis uh, for zeolites, uh, mesoporous materials, colloidal crystals and so on. And uh, we can also aim for electrochemical synthesis, oxidation reduction and uh, polymerization uh, methods. All these are grouped under wet chemi chemical routes and uh, each uh, synthetic approach distinguishes itself in stabilizing a particular phase or a group of solids uh, that we are uh, looking for. And another popular uh, route for making solids which often the physics uh, the principles are involved. Therefore, physicists uh, often work on uh, these methods. These are based on thin films uh, using either chemical methods or physical methods um, and then uh, the most popular one now uh, is the self assembling monolays which we call it as SAM for making solids. Um, and of course, the most traditional way of making solids in the um, in the earlier decades is the single crystal growth for making um, high pure uh, solids and also uh, one can use uh, high pressure synthesis for making uh, solids uh, using either a dry approach or wet, uh, wet approach. So, there are different ways in which we can make this uh, solid state uh, materials and uh, we will uh, take some time in the subsequent lectures to see how these solids can be made using different functional groups uh, fu functional approaches. Uh, <coughs> the heart of materials uh, is how does one think about the chemical synthesis, uh, the mode of formation and reactivity of new and existing materials which target specific relations between structure, property, function and utility. So, therefore, this forms the core of the uh, materials chemistry approach. Now, to name a few I just want to bring in this candid um, illustration of uh, yttrium barium copper. This is the most uh, highly uh, studied uh, uh, superconducting phase. This is a defect perovskite and all you can see here is that x 
what we see here is what is controlling the superconducting property here and uh, this is based on uh, uh, in other words this x will control the copper oxidation state between 2 and 3 and that will make either the ma material superconducting or it will make it metal or semiconducting. So, this is one of the group of oxides which really stands as a explicit, explicit example to show how chemical synthesis is um, a very vital protocol in realizing um, applications of many of the solids. Um, now, by carefully maintaining uh, the um, synthetic uh, route, uh, we can control the phase purity and we can realize this high temp uh, high TC superconductors which actually can be used for the applications like this. And there is another group of compound which is again a perovskite uh, and this is also a defect induced perovskite and here again the x factor plays a very important role and this x will control in this case not copper, but here uh, manganese between 3 and 4 oxidation state which actually determines the oxide ion conductivity or the solid oxide fuel cell or the colossal magnetoresistivity. This is another uh, very interesting compound uh, where the chemical synthesis has really uh, been established uh, to control different properties uh, as far as the applications are concerned. Another group of compounds which are layered com um, cobalt oxide uh, where you create a van der Waals uh, gap and uh, lithium can be intercalated in this uh, layers as a result you can control the lithium ion conductivity and you can also um, look at the solid state battery applications. So, these are a class of compounds where uh, the chemical synthesis has been laid a lot of emphasis because of their uh, functional importance. <coughs> Now, when we think of the philosophy of uh, solid state material synthesis, uh, choosing a method is very very important. The solid state material synthesis methods are distinct to solution phase preparative techniques in the way that one devises an approach to a particular product and the way one chooses precursors and how they react in the solid state. So, there is a basic difference between the uh, synthetic approach for making solid state materials compared to solution phase uh, preparative techniques. The form, the size, shape, orientation, organization and dimensionality as well as bulk and surface composition and structure of a material are of often of prime importance. Also the stability of the material under reaction conditions that is temperature, pressure and atmosphere is a key consideration for making this uh, solid state materials. Therefore, the uh, <coughs> factors that influence solid state reactions um, are many and this can be governed uh, during the synthesis. The classes of uh, solid state uh, synthetic methods are of important and other things that uh, control the uh, material synthesis is the size, shape and surface control of solids. For example, the solid state synthesis choosing the precursor, choosing a method, designing uh, specific structure property all this governs the solid state material synthesis. Uh, <coughs> now, when we think of uh, the synthesis we always think it is very easy because it does not involve much of uh, wet chemical route therefore, we often think solid state chemistry uh, synthesis is often a very simple uh, phenomena, but what we see is uh, it, it looks deceptively simple, but when you actually go through the protocol you will find that it is extremely important to have a hands on experience on solid state chemistry. For example, you take graphite which is a semi metal and if you start doping uh, uh, potassium actually this is a intercalation that is happening and you try to pump in the potassium uh, as a gaseous molecule. Uh, and when they arrive between the graphitic sheets this is what happens the potassium ions get intercalated between the graphitic sheets and what happens in the first stage um, selectively they uh, occupy uh, at random and then as you keep on increasing the concentration of uh, the potassium ions you would see they go from room temperature metal all the way up to low temperature superconductors. Now, how much of potassium that you control 
determines what sort of property that you are looking for. So, it is a simple graphitic semi metal, but the way you progressively go on doping potassium determines whether the material can, can transcend to a uh, to a normal metal or to a superconductor. So, this is very important to understand that the solid state uh, um, principles are looking uh, easier, but they are more involved. For example, if you look at the same reaction more carefully in a mechanistic way, you would uh, see that initially the potassium is uh, sent as a gaseous uh, phase and they get adsorbed and during adsorption there is a electron transfer and after the electron transfer the potassium ions gets adsorbed and then there is a, a migration insertion of this potassium uh, ions which are adsorbed on the surface into the um, uh, graphitic sheets. There, uh, and then uh, because of this lot of other things can happen uh, electron repulsion between the sheets can come because you are trying to accommodate a potassium ion between the graphitic sheets as a result your graphitic layers get uh, deformed. So, several things happen here for example, uh, surface adsorption sometimes this uh, waxy top layer can actually um, sort of uh, hinder uh, the whole process. But if you selectively uh, do the adsorption, then that transforms, uh, uh, transforms to uh, electron transfer from uh, potassium to uh, pi star empty uh, band of graphite and then electron repulsion between interlayer uh, leading to expansion of the graphitic layers, higher mobility of the smaller uh, k plus compared to uh, k 0 will also alter the uh, uh, graphitic uh, sheet alignment and then uh, this facilitates uh, <coughs> k plus ion injection into the layer space. So, so, so many mechanisms happen uh, in a simple um, reaction between a gas phase uh, gas solid interface and uh, therefore, uh, the mechanism of uh, any solid state uh, uh, chemistry synthesis is quite involved. Now, in this intercalation chemistry between the sheets uh, this nice example of a solid vapor uh, reaction if we sum up all the mechanism that is happening you can see it is not just one or two there are more than 10 uh, reactions that are happening in a simple solid vapor um, reaction. Um, for example, um, the most important ones which can affect the property of uh, graphitic uh, stuff is the gas distribution as a result you can see the layer bending and the elastic deformation of the uh, defect induced uh, graphitic layers and uh, then it transforms um, the whole material from a metal to a superconducting tr uh, transition. So, how and why do solids react? what is uh, the uh, fundamental understanding about the reactivity of solids. Now, when we probe into these reasons one of the thing that we need to understand is when we look at solid state ke chemistry synthesis uh, the chemical reactivity of the solid state material is very important and uh, this depends on the physical dimensions uh, as well as the bulk and surface structure and imperfections of reactants and products. All this decides whether such a uh, chemical uh, synthesis can be achieved with precision. Therefore, uh, the individual reactivity of the reactants play an important role and second the factors governing solid state reactivity underpins concepts and methods for the synthesis of new solid state materials. So, once you know the individual reactivity of this uh, reactants then you need to know what sort of uh, synthetic approach that you need to take in order to get this uh, new materials and solid state synthesis making materials with desired uh, size and shape bulk and surface composition and desired relation between structure properties function and utility is distinct um, and uh, this is uh, uh, certainly quite different from the liquid and gas phase homogeneous reactions. So, um, what we need to understand is the chemical reactivity and the factors governing such uh, reactivity underplays a very important role in um, <coughs> the synthesis. Again when we talk about uh, the, uh, the reactivity 
Uh, now, we need to think about conventional liquid and gas phase reaction. Uh, usually, they are driven by intrinsic reactivity such as chemical potential, activation energy, temperature and concentration of the chemical species. Whereas, in contrast to that is the solid, solid phase uh, reactions and in solid phase reactions we are talking about the chemical constituents um, and we are talking about the crystal imperfections and uh, the diffusion uh, rather than intrinsic reactivity of the constituents. So, solid state reactivity is also determined by uh, the particle size, shape, surface area, grain packing, surface crystallographic plane and so on. So, all this underlie the reactivity of solids. Now, uh, we can actually uh, classify what sort of uh, solid state uh, reactions happen or the reactivity of solids and how the chemical synthesis progresses. There are different ways we can realize the synthesis. For first of all, we can think of a solids, uh, solid converting to a solid. This is one of the ways of reali realizing a solid state material and uh, the simplest example is that of a decomposition reaction. Uh, it could be a, a simple decomposition uh, conversion of say calcium carbonate to calcium oxide which is a solid to solid product conversion or it could be a polymerization reaction or it could be a phase transition reaction. Um, one of the classic example of this sort is uh, taking molybdenum trioxide which is usually a dihydrate and if you heat this it transforms to a monohydrate and then it goes through a topotactic reaction to give MOO3 and uh, the this beauty here is it is a topotactic reaction involving a water loss and this can be actually monitored based on Avrami kinetics and we can talk here about the um, uh, single solid phase uh, interaction uh, where induction, nucleation, growth product and depletion of reaction can be studied at one stretch. <coughs> For example, if you take this uh, um, example of uh, unique two dimensional layered uh, um, MOO3, you can see there are chains of uh, corner sharing um, octahedral building blocks um, and they are shared by edges with two similar uh, chains. Uh, th these are the corner shared ones which are uh, edge shared here and they make uh, two similar chains like this and this set of arrangement makes a layer wherein you can actually bring about intercalation between this MOO3 layers and uh, one of the example is that of introducing tungsten ion into this uh, lattices and uh, once uh, this MOO3 layers are stacked then they create a interlayer van der Waals uh, space wherein intercalation and deintercalation can be achieved. <coughs> uh, in general the solid to solid transformations can be studied by uh, Avrami kinetics. So, the nucleation and growth of one solid phase within the other can be described by this uh, kinetics where random and isolated nuclear uh, nucleation at high energy defect sites with one dimensional, two dimensional or three dimensional growth uh, can be studied. Uh, expression for Avrami kinetics is based on this expression where the fraction of the reaction that is completed is equated to uh, this, uh, uh, this term exponential term that is 1 minus e to the power k t minus tau uh, whole power n where tau is the incubation time for nucleation and n is the dimensionality depend exponent and k is your rate, rate constant. So, in the initial phase you will see that the uh, conversion is very slow. So, which we call it as a incubation uh, which is determined by tau and then um, there is a phase where the growth of this uh, solid state phase is occurring which is uh, um, in this plateau and then once the reaction is complete it goes through a depletion time. So, uh, this can be equated to uh, the Avrami kinetics and in solid state uh, synthesis one can uh, effectively uh, study the kinetics um, uh, kinetic parameters and uh, the growth can be monitored. If you look at um, a gas solid reaction 
uh, then we can then we can study uh, how a gas is getting adsorbed. For example, if we have solid and we allow gas to come and get adsorbed, now we can have um, many sort of reaction happening like this examples are oxidation reactions, reduction reactions, nitridation and intercalation all these reactions can happen on a static solid phase and gas is getting adsorbed either it can diffuse or it can replace. So, many things can happen for example, we can passivate a metal metallic layer or a oxide layer using nitrogen. So, nitrogen gas can get adsorbed and something like this can happen as as you keep on adding or passing gas you can see the surface is getting modified and the growth can proceed systematically to completely convert the solid phase with uh, with the gas that you are uh, passing. So, <coughs> rate limiting diffusion of reactants through product layer growing on solid reactant phase can be achieved using this sort of solid gas reaction. And we can also classify uh, the solid uh, state reaction uh, based on other uh, examples. For example, in this case again adsorbing H 2 S on silver to form silver sulphide is a solid state reaction or passivation of uh, aluminum by oxygen giving aluminum oxide is a another uh, solid state reaction involving uh, surface and uh, gaseous reactant. We can also look at the uh, conversion of benzene to cyclohexane as one of the heterogeneous catalyzed reaction where hydrogen is adsorbed on to platinum and then it reacts with benzene to give C 6 H 12 or there could be chemical vapor deposition where you can take gallium arsenide and you can um, you, you can pump in this gaseous reactants to form gallium arsenide indium phosphide um, semiconductors. So, uh, key surface species and surface reactivity where adsorption, desorption, dissociation and diffusion process are achieved um, and uh, by this way you can get uh, uh, new phases. Uh, there are other solid state reactions wherein solid plus solid can give solid products. Some of the examples are addition reaction. In this addition reaction you have zinc oxide and Fe 2 O 3 forming zinc ferrite. In other words this is a spinal compound. So, this is a um, solid solid reaction yielding another solid or you can go for a metathesis or a exchange reaction where you take zinc sulphide and treat it with cadmium, cadmium oxide you can actually get cadmium sulphide and zinc oxide. So, this is a metathesis reaction or you can go for alloying where you take zinc selenide and you add uh, cadmium selenide then you can get a solid solution such as zinc cadmium selenide. So, solid state interfacial reactions depends on contact area mass transport of reactants through product layer nucleation and growth of product phase. This again can be systematically governed or monitored through um, a parabolic uh, growth kinetics. Here is uh, another example of cadmium sulphate zinc oxide which I mentioned the metathesis. Um, here this is very interesting because um, both the reactants what we have and the product they all have the same crystal structure. But the reaction that is proceeding is of a very intricate nature. We take the uh, surface of uh, cadmium ox uh, sulphide and then we have zinc oxide, but what happens here is both cadmium has to go um, go into zinc and zinc has to go into cadmium such a way that you have the anions exchange. In other words uh, in, in this case the, this is these are the anions. So, you have the anion uh, uh, close packing that is intricate, but cadmium has to diffuse into the zinc site and zinc has to diffuse into the cadmium site. It looks very simple, but then it is a diffusion controlled mechanism where the uh, cationic mobility dominates this conversion process. So, this is a classic example of how um, diffusion uh, control mechanism holds uh, a very important role in the solid state uh, 
uh, synthesis. Here is another uh, reaction where uh, the, the metal exchange reaction is also achieved and uh, this can look uh, very simple, but again this is very complicated. For example, you take copper and silver chloride giving copper chloride and silver or copper treated with silver sulphide giving copper sulphide and uh, silver metal. This is purely based on ion migration and electron exchange interface. So, two things are happening one is the ionic mobility is there and also there is a electronic mobility. So, as much as the ionic mobility is happening between these two interfaces now there is also electron mobility that is to be taken into consideration because it has to happen that way for uh, for this new reaction products to be achieved. So, the, uh, this again looks very simple, but it is intrinsically a very complex process. Take for example, another uh, uh, solid state reaction uh, uh, let us take a, a example of a solid with a liquid or a melt giving solid products. The best example here in this case is the Grignard reagent formation. Okay. Take the a case of magnesium uh, metal which is a, uh, which is a solid and then you have uh, Rx that is uh, um, alkyl halide which is liquid and then you also have ether which is a liquid. Now, to form this solid product you actually have to go through several fundamental steps which looks simple, but it is very intricate. And another classic example of um, uh, solid liquid melt is your uh, um, hydrogen incorporation in lithium aluminum hydride where lithium ion for hydrogen ion exchange between ALO2 layers um, are uh, achieved and this is also a very sensitive reaction and basically these are controlled by surface defects adsorption dissociation and uh, other uh, <coughs> diffusion mechanism. Just to show what all the various steps that happens in solid state synthesis you take again the example of Grignard formation. In this case actually the uh, alkyl halide actually gets adsorbed in the initial uh, reaction with the magnesium metal which is having a zero valency. Now, once bonds are formed now uh, this sort of species is formed which now is um, uh, taking uh, another uh, molecule of ether and this is now getting detached from the uh, magnesium metal surface. So, so many things happen one is the RCL uh, surface adsorption and then uh, oxidative addition that is happening and then magnesium magnesium bond breaking occurs and after that you have the uh, ether getting coordinated to magnesium and then the Grignard surface desorbs from the magnesium metal. So, many things happen, but it looks as though it is a very very easy process, but the solid state chemistry that is involved is really peculiar there. So, when thinking about material synthesis what is solid state materials chemistry all about it is the synthesis and the chemical and physical properties of solids with structures based upon infinite lattices or extended networks of interconnected atoms ions molecules complexes or clusters in 1D, 2D and 3D. So, it is a quite involved mechanism different techniques and concepts for synthesis characterization and the properties measurements of solid state materials from those conventionally applied to molecular solids liquids liquid crystals solutions and gases. So, uh, fundamentally this solid state approach is very very different from uh, what we uh, usually encounter with the uh, molecular solids and we can therefore, uh, play around with a various class of uh, solid state synthesis depending on the type of end products that we are looking for. So, this brings us again to focus what sort of approach that we are using the slides which I showed in the initial part of the lecture again we come to the portfolio of uh, solid state materials. So, we need to go based on the reactivity of the solids based on the functional application based on um, the reactivity of the starting materials or the structure we can play around with the, a host of uh, preparatory roots. Not only this, uh, but thin film roots uh, nano approaches can be made in order to realize uh, different sort of uh, chemical compounds. 
Uh, so, um, in one sense we can brief uh, briefly uh, sum up um, to say that the factors influencing reactions of solids involves reaction coordinate uh, conditions, temperature, pressure and atmosphere, uh, structural considerations, reaction mechanism, surface area of precursors, defect concentration and uh, defect types, uh, nucleation of one phase within the other, diffusion rates of atoms, ions, molecules, clusters in solids and then we can talk about uh, uh, sur uh, the epitactic surface and topotactic bulk reactions with the lattice matching criteria uh, to minimize uh, uh, elastic strain and then surface structure and reactivity of different crystal planes. So, so many factors uh, do affect the solid state synthesis and especially uh, to make new functional materials all these issues have to be taken into consideration. Yeah, I will now take you to uh, through some of the uh, reactions uh, which stands as uh, archetype for uh, solid state uh, reactions. Uh, one of the classic example is uh, the formation of magnesium Al2O3 uh, Al2O4 which is a spinel and uh, how this formation of this uh, compound can be monitored. Uh, now, this can be kinetically monitored. Uh, Let us take the single crystals of MgO and Al2O3 when they are kept glued uh, to each other surface and then one can monitor how the formation of the spinal can be achieved. The model reaction is MgO plus Al2O3 giving MgAl2O4 and uh, this is a spinal which is a cubic close pack one made of uh, oxygen uh, close packing. Now, here the beauty is magnesium has to go um, into one eighth of the tetrahedral voids and aluminum has to go into half of the octahedral voids selectively. Now, all this has to happen when you just keep one crystal with the other crystal and you start heating it and this is what happens magnesium has to travel from this interface this region into the interface along this direction and Al 3 plus has to travel in this direction. So, as this diffusion is happening then you will see progressively at the interface a product is forming and this is initially the original interface at time T 0 and once you start heating it you see this yellow patch that is forming which is nothing but your spinal phase and this yellow phase is the Mg Al 2 O 4 new product layer uh, thickness and this thickness is actually increasing with time in such a way that this will amount to from this original layer x by 4 times of this will propagate towards the MgO layer and 3 x by 4 times it will be propagating towards the um, Al 2 O 3 uh, uh, layer. So, the product front will actually travel in both the directions depending on the mobility and the concentration of aluminum and uh, magnesium respectively. So, if one magnesium has to go in this forward direction then two aluminum has to for, uh, travel in this direction as a result you will see the product front is actually growing much faster in the Al 2 O 3 interface rather than the MgO interface. So, this can be clearly monitored and uh, <coughs> um, at time t we can try to see how much of this uh, spinal phase has grown. So, in this um, solid state reaction you can see this is thermodynamic and kinetic factors are at work both are playing a vital um, role in the formation of this product. Yeah, the spinal is uh, formed eventually because of the solid state precursors. So, what are all the uh, issues that are happening during this uh, solid state reaction? Uh, number one is the thermodynamic and kinetic factors are to be understood how they are uh, they can limit this uh, formation. Number two we should know the site occupancy and therefore, if, if you know the site occupancy then we will also know whether the ionic size is suitable for such a solid state reaction to happen 
and then we should also know the single crystal precursors whether they are conducive whether they are, whether they are defect free and the interfaces between the reactants and the temperature that is applied for this reaction to occur. On reaction uh, new reactant product uh, that is MgO MgAl2O4 and Al2O3 MgAl2O4 interfaces form and uh, uh, progressively as you see here in this uh, in this type of reaction the free energy of spinal formation is always negative and therefore, it favors a reaction and the high energy of activation means extremely slow reaction at normal temperatures, but you can see this uh, reaction rate is en enhancing um, if you are going to increase the temperature to 1500 degree centigrade. Similarly, one can actually follow the reaction kinetics of uh, Mg Fe 2 O 4 which is uh, spinal again and uh, this is popularly known as uh, Kirkendall effect because in one case MgO is a colorless solid and Fe 2 O 3 is a brownish uh, orange solid and together it will give you a brown solid and it is very easy if you take a MgO crystal and Fe 2 O 3 crystal and you try to keep that in at the interface and start heating it you will see different color interfaces pro uh, happening at that point and therefore, you can easily monitor the kinetics of such a reaction which is uh, nothing but the Kirkendall effect and there are other examples to such process um, and we can calculate the Kirkendall ratio uh, for example, reaction involving strontium oxide and uh, uh, TiO2 gives you SR TiO3 and uh, we can take uh, 2 Kf uh, plus N NiF2 which is K2 NaO4 type of uh, structure and so on. So, we can also try to monitor based on the colored interfaces there are other um, examples uh, to that end easily monitored with colored product such interface for example, nickel oxide which is a green oxide and Al2O3 is colorless together it will form a faint green th th form a blue uh, oxide nickel Al2O4. Again here in this case we can determine uh, the reaction kinetics using Arrhenius plot and uh, we can try to monitor the energy of activation of this reaction. Uh, if you take for example, uh, two rock salts for example, this is the famous NaCl structure um, MO rock salt crystal structure uh, this looks simple, but actually this is two inter uh, penetrating FCC lattices um, FCC lattice of oxygen with M in every octahedral site and therefore, they form a cubic array of corner and edge sharing octahedral building blocks and if you actually look at the structure it is very uh, important to understand how this uh, reactions proceed because we within this um, FCC lattice you will see two rock salt um, lattices uh, uh, mixed together one is uh, with the uh, red core as your center which is octahedrally coordinated and second is this um, black uh, sphere which is octahedrally coordinated to um, six red spheres. So, um, it can either be a MO6 octahedra or OM6 octahedra and together they can form either a uh, corner shared polyhedra or they can form a edge shared polyhedra. This is edge shared because uh, the edges of this uh, octahedra is actually in phase with four other octahedras. So, to make either a corner shared octahedra or edge shared octahedra solid state reaction has to be very selective. It cannot uh, give mixed ones but it is very selective dependent on the type of rock salt structure that you are using what set of uh, uh, the cations that uh, cation anion that you are looking for will determine whether you get a, a, a corner shed or a edge shed polyhedra again uh, corundum structure is there uh, this is a octahedral block representation of al 2 o3 uh, which is uh, having a corundum structure where this is made out of a hexagonal close packing of oxygen where 
two third of the octahedral sites are occupied by Al 2 O 3. So, this is again a very selective uh, occup site occupancy. So, if any doping has to be uh, happening uh, then it has to go into this selective slide sites of, uh, of this octahedral sites where aluminum is doped and that will uh, determine the property of uh, the substituted solids. Spinal crystal structure is another good representation of how the solid state reaction happens. This is another uh, complicated uh, crystal structure where uh, the whole network of uh, spinal structure is made out of oxygen close packing where one eighth of the tetrahedral voids is occupied by Mg2 plus and half of the octahedral voids are occupied by Al3 plus. So, the trivalent metal ion occupies the octahedral site and the divalent metal ion occupies the tetrahedral site and here again the diffusion or the solid state reaction is a time consuming process because each of this metal ions have to go and occupy the respective sites. It is not possible for the aluminum to occupy the tetrahedral sites therefore, the solid state reaction conditions has to be optimized such a way that a effective occupancy of magnesium and aluminum in tetrahedral and octahedral voids is achieved respectively. And uh, uh, another uh, very important structure uh, in uh, uh, materials chemistry is uh, rutail structure where you have the <coughs> metal ion which is actually uh, coordinated to uh, four other oxygens in this fashion and uh, they can be edge shared or they can be face shared or corner shared depending on the size of metal ion and the anion that you are looking for. The next important uh, class of compounds uh, which takes our attention in uh, solid state synthesis is the perovskite crystal structure. Uh, this again comes from a MO6 octahedra and this MO6 octahedra forms the corner shared polyhedral uh, stuff. So, doping selectively for the metal site is very important technique where solid state chemistry uh, synthesis can play a very uh, vital role and uh, therefore, uh, it is uh, a, it is actually called as a perovskite chameleon because you can very easily modify the property of this perovskite uh, by carefully doping either into the oxygen site or the metal site and therefore, defects and non stoichiometry control the structure property and uh, uh, and as a result the utility relations. Uh, there are classic examples of this perovskite uh, compounds one is lithium neobate which is a non linear optical ferroelectric which is used in electro optical switch as you can see here the perovskite lattice can be still maintained with a pentavalent neobium and a monovalent lithium still they can stabilize a ABO3 type of structure or this can be a divalent and a tetravalent cations strontium titanium these are disensidized semiconductor uh, used in solar cells SRTAO3 then we have HXWO3 which is a proton conductor and this is used in hydrogen oxygen uh, fuel cell as an electrolyte uh, where you can carefully try to dope uh, hydrogen uh, in a, a WO3 um, matrix. And as I told you earlier we also have other perovskites for example, this high TC superconductor and then barium titanium which is a ferroelectric um, we can use it for holography applications and uh, <coughs> we have a lanthanum manganate uh, doped with calcium as I told you earlier uh, this is uh, used for spin control of resistance and used in data storage. Um, lanthanum strontium manganate used in solid oxide fuel cell as cathodes because uh, uh, it is a good uh, oxide ion conductor and we can also make um, uh, several uh, perovskite uh, compounds like uh, PBS ZR TaO3 which is used for uh, uh, piezoelectric uh, applications used in AFM and so on. So, so many different sort of compounds and you can see a variety of uh, cations that you can dope 
uh, maintaining the same structure, but you can end up with a range of properties from magnetism to conductivity to uh, ionic mobility. Um, you can go for any sort of uh, property and the precise control of the size and shape of these materials will help in the uh, utility applications. Uh, K 2 N A 4 is another group of structure which is important um, in the uh, materials chemistry where you can see this as a repeat layer of N A F 2 K F K F N A F 2 K F K F and so on. So, you uh, this is a special case of a perovskite that you can uh, make where uh, you have this uh, N A F 2 sheets with a uh, inter sheet of uh, K plus that is um, stabilizing this K 2 N A 4 structure. So, in essence uh, we are actually looking at uh, um, few uh, issues that are fundamental to <coughs> the solid state uh, uh, synthesis size, shape and defects are everything. So, to say um, the morphology and physical size of the product controls uh, synthetic method of choice, rate and extent of reaction and reactivity single crystal phase pure defect free solids they do not exist and if they did not likely of much interest. Single crystals that has been defect modified with dopants which are intrinsic uh, extrinsic um, and this can control uh, the chemical and physical properties uh, the function and utility. And therefore, when we when we look at all this uh, combinations we can single out to say that shape determines the um, solid state uh, um, synthetic approach. So, if you are looking for micro crystalline powder uh, then wherever single crystal cannot be used and it is not preferred for industrial production you can resort to a powder form and certain applications where large area um, useful uh, for uh, control of reactivity, catalytic chemistry, separation materials and energy materials can be achieved just with micro crystalline powder. Suppose you want polycrystalline uh, shapes like pellet, tube, rod and wire then we can go in for such uh, chemical processes where we can get that for applications like superconducting ceramic wires, ceramic engines, um, uh, magnets and so on. Then you can think of single crystal or polycrystalline film uh, you know uh, in uh, if we are looking for uh, use in microelectronics in optical communication photonic applications we can go for epitaxial film if we are looking for uh, photonic and electronic applications or we can go for glassy substances fibers films and so on for a range of uh, opt optoelectronic applications and so on. So, in all this we see that the role of um, chemical synthesis is actually based on the sort of utility that you are looking for. So, based on that you need to modify your chemical applications. Lastly, I just want to finish with this uh, beautiful uh, figure. Uh, these are nothing but superconducting helical flexible nano cables mm, and these are actually formed by chemical synthetic roots size and shape and surface is everything in the solid state and especially at this time it is more on the nano materials world. So, with this I finish and then we can look at um, several uh, chemical approaches in the upcoming lectures. <laughs>